Welcome to another video from CorbettEast.com. My name's Jay. I play board games from Asia and share what I find with all of you. Had you ever played a game from India? Well, outside of Shoots and Ladders or Snakes and Ladders, I hadn't until I played Chai Goram. Now, normally when I review games, I review games from Southeast Asia, like Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, Korea, China. Now, I had never played a game from India before, so I was really excited to get my hands on Chai Garam. Now, this is the first edition of the game. Right now, on GameFound, there is the second edition of Chai Garam, and there are quite a few differences, and I'll talk to you about them. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and teach you kind of what's going on in the game, and then we'll come back up top and I'll share my thoughts. Welcome to Chai Garam. Now, I'm only gonna give you a brief overview here, and I'm gonna do that for a number of reasons. Uh, first and foremost is because this is the first edition of the game, and the second edition of the game has a different rule set. I mean, 90% of the DNA is pretty much intact, but they made a few tweaks in here, and I don't want you to get confused. So I'm just gonna give you a brief overview about what's true for both the first and the second edition of the game, just to give you an idea of the gameplay, and then I'll go back up and share my thoughts. Uh, now, here is everything you're going to need. Uh, here is my own player board here, or my Tapri is what you call it. So I, here I have with three burners. I begin with one pot, and it can be on any of these three. They're all exactly the same. This is the little upgrade board. I believe in the new edition, it's going to be one board here. Every player is also going to have these four little cubes that you can put here uh, for your upgrades. And I'm also going to have like these little cup tokens here. I believe in the uh, new version, these are actually like 3D little plastic cups. So that's kind of cool, a nice little upgrade. Uh, also, all players are going to begin with a goal card. The goal of the game is, well, to score points, and you're going to get points. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins the game. On your turn, you have one of two actions. You either go to the market or you serve tea. That's it. And there are a whole bunch of free little actions uh, in between. So if you go to the market, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take three cards. And there are lots of different categories of cards, and we're going to go through them in just a second. So you have basics here. This basic deck is, consists of water, sugar, and milk. Uh, that's it. That's all that's there. Uh, there are the tea leaves. Now, there are four kinds of tea leaves. You have your Darjeeling and Assam for black tea. You have Nilgiri and Kashmiri for green tea. We also have additives here. Additives are exactly what they are, like things you add to the tea. So for example, you have lemon, ginger, and cardamom. This is gonna be added to your teas. Uh, you also have these snack cards here, and these snack cards do various things. If you take, uh, on your turn, you take a market action. You're gonna take three cards, and that's it. So you could do maybe like one basic, uh, two teas, or you could do one of each, or you could do three basics. And you don't have to choose cards that are right up here face up, you could just dive down and get an unknown one as well. And then if in a later turn, after you get enough ingredients, then you could take a serve action. And when you serve, you're gonna serve people in this uh, Mela board. Now, this is the most confusing part of the game. So if you get this, you're golden. Uh, you'll see nine uh, customers here. Uh, they f form three rows and three columns. So you have row one, row two, row three, column one, column two, column three. But really, they're in three lines. And they have this little icon here with a finger here. I believe in the new edition, they have something that's a little brighter and louder. That makes it a little bit more obvious. But they're really in three cues. Beginning of the line, end of the line. Beginning of the line, end of the line. So typically, you should serve these three people first, and then these three people last. Now, when you serve tea, you can only serve one, two, or three people. But all three people have to be in the same column or in the same row. Meaning that you can serve her and them. You can see these two. You can serve these two. You can serve these three. Uh, but you can't ever serve these two people here because they're not in the same row or in the same column. Now, if for whatever reason, if you want to serve uh, people like here at the end of the line, you could totally do that. But you're going to make people disgruntled. You're serving this person. And then these two people, well, they were in line first, so they're upset. And you're going to take these little negative tokens here and then put them on their card. Typically, we put them in the top left-hand corner of the cards, and you're going to do that. If you ever do that, then you're going to take one of these tokens here and give it to yourself. And if you notice on the bottom side of the card, there's like a tolerance level. So she has four. So if she ever gets four tokens on her, well, then she's just going to be upset, and then she's just going to leave. Now, getting into serving, it gets a little bit more layers here. There are two kinds of serves. You could do a specific serve or a simple serve. Well, let's... Uh, 
look at how to make tea. Let's take a step back and how to make tea. If you want to make uh, regular tea, all you need is a water card and a tea card. If you want to make green tea, well then you'll need to use like a green tea card and water and then you have green tea. Now, if you want to make milk tea, well then you have to have a black tea, either Darjeeling or Hassan, then you need sugar and milk. Now, in addition to that, uh, some customers here, and you'll notice it's, it's written on the cards themselves, that they want a Pacific additive. So maybe they want lemon, or maybe they want ginger, or they add lachi. Well, that's simple. You just add that to the pile of cards that you're cooking with. Now, if you look closely on the cards, they'll tell you what they want. So this person here, he wants green tea, any leaf. He doesn't care. Uh, she wants black tea, any leaf, but she wants uh, Tulsi, which is the type of additive. Here, she wants milk tea, any leaf, not picky, and she wants cloves. So she wants cloves in her milk tea. Now, this is where the idea of simple or specific serve comes from. If you do a simple serve, well then you'll just give them the kind of tea they want. You might not necessarily have the right leaf, you might not have the right additives, you just give them just a regular tea that they want. If that's the case, you'll just take your tea, your tea cup here that you've made and you'll place it on here and you'll collect money. How does that money work? Well, if it's uh, black tea or green tea, you'll just get $1. If it's milk tea, then you'll just get $2. And that's for a simple serve. A specific serve is exactly what it sounds like. You give them exactly what they want. Now, at the end of the serving turn, it can get a little bit more complicated. Remember that if you serve anyone out of order, you have to give these negative tokens out. If you give any negative tokens out, then you gotta take one negative token. In addition to that, if you get the simple serve, you're gonna get money. If you get the specific serve, you're gonna get more money. On top of that layer, if you get all three people, all specific serves, then you get this little Chai Garam card that you could use on a later turn. And this has different uh, powers that you could use. Uh, typically, it allows you to just take a free action immediately after yours. So you get like a double turn. Now, whether you simple serve or specific serve, uh, any customers, you're just going to take those and you're going to keep them uh, with you and keep them like in your private slash tableau. Then you'll draw more customers here and fill it up. Now, why do you want to collect these receipts? Well, you want to collect these receipts for these goal cards. And you're going to have like a private goal card here, and then there'll be public goal cards. And each uh, goal card is going to be worth points. Some of these goal cards will be about, well, did you serve everyone in the same column, the second row, or the first row? If you serve all three of these, you can get one of those. Now, some of the goal cards are set collections. So you can see here I have three uh, blue customers. If I get three of these blue customer cards or three of these blue receipts, I could trade them in, and then I get this goal card, which gives me victory points. Now, this piece over here is for the advanced play, at least for the first edition. Now, I believe for the second edition, they included this in the base game, so I'm just gonna go ahead and teach you this really quickly. If you notice on some of these customer cards, they have what they call tags here in the top right-hand corner. So this one has two A tags, which is for the Assam uh, green leaf. If I had these like in my little receipts area here, I could trade them in, and then I can get this, and then that would be worth points. I trade two, I get points. Everyone else will eventually have to trade three to get points. Now, in addition to that, there is yet another layer here. So you can take people off of the board and then place them uh, below your player board here. I'm just gonna place them here so you can still see them. And when you serve tea, you could serve people here in any one specific row or column or anyone here at your Capri. So you could serve even more people, make more money and just do even more. And if you happen to serve all three people here, then you get another point. Now, play will continue and continue until the night customer comes out. You'll notice her because she has a darkened, blackened background. I believe during setup, you'll stick her card somewhere halfway through the deck. And if her card ever leaves the Mela board, either through she's getting angry and upset and she leaves, or someone collects the receipt, then the game ends immediately. In addition to that, if a player ever gets their fifth upgrade, then they will also trigger the end game, and the game ends immediately. At least that's what it was for the first edition. The second edition has an equal turn system, so everyone has equal turns. And then once that's done, whoever has the most points uh, wins the game. And that is more or less how you play Chai Garam. I'm going to go back up and then tell you my thoughts, uh, what I thought about the first edition and what I thought about the second edition. Now, before we begin the review, I definitely want to point out again that this is the first edition of the game, and I'm not going to be reviewing the first edition of the game. I'm going to be reviewing the second edition of the game that is currently on GameFound now. I'll talk a little bit of the differences here and what you can look for and what can you expect. Now, the first edition is from Dice Toy Labs, which is a publisher from India. Dice Toy Labs is working with 
Mosaic Games, who recently released Karagari Taj. All right, so let's break it down. Components. Now, for the first edition, I gotta say that the components were not good. They're quite bad, actually. Like these cards, when I first got them, they all stuck together and I literally had to peel each and every individual card apart. And you can't really see it here, but these cards uh, kind of stuck together. When you peel them off, some of the paint or the color would come off as well. Nothing that's too bad, but it, yeah, it's just not ideal. And even the card backs, the colors were not consistent. Uh, sometimes the cut, uh, there is no bleed on this design, so the cut would be off and off-centered. Uh, you can't really notice it with these, but you can definitely notice it with like the snack cards. Like some cards have a not yellow and some definitely have a yellow up top. So that was not really ideal. These tokens were okay. These are all serviceable. But this game board was really not good. Now, I don't know if Mosaic Games is gonna be using the same manufacturer. I hope not. I do know in the game found that they're gonna have like a neoprene board and they're gonna have a new board all together, which I think is great and a great upgrade and this game definitely deserves it. I will say that Karagari Taj, the components are fantastic. I think this is a really good quality for component wise. So I'm assuming that Mosaic Games is going to give this an upgrade as well. And hopefully they never use this manufacturer again because I think this game deserves a better manufacturer. Another thing component-wise I was really glad to see go was that you maybe noticed when I taught the game I had these little cubes here on my board. Uh, these cubes are actually mine. I, I just have a lot of cubes because I have a lot of games. The game originally came with like these little tiny check mark tokens and you would put these in the slots um, as you get your upgrades. And it just, yeah, it just really wasn't good. And I'm really glad they got took these check marks and got rid of and upgraded two cubes. I understand that these checks are significantly cheaper uh, manufacturing cost wise, but the cubes are definitely uh, where it's at. And I'm really glad that they upgraded those uh, in the new edition. Moving on to art. Art is one of the best things about this game because it is beautiful. I love how bright and colorful and vibrant everything is. All the characters are very distinguishable. Even the coins aren't really boring. Star tokens look really nice and bright and cartoony. And this game has a really, really unique look to it. Now, going from art, I'm gonna to go to UI, which means user interface. And that's kind of like how the art is designed, how the cards are laid out. And I think it could have been better. So right now, like everything on the cards is, is kind of written out in English and you kind of have to read it, which is fine. It's totally fine. And no one really had any problems with it. But if you're sitting to where the board is upside down and you have to read the English upside down, it can be a little bit difficult to read. And sometimes seeing the additives is also difficult. Like I can kind of see the T, I can kind of see uh, what kind of leaf it is. And it gets confusing sometimes because the tags here for the advanced game are not are kind of different than what the person is requesting. So I really wish they went to this nice iconography route so it would be just a little bit faster to read from a distance. On top of that, it's very subtle difference here and it's really cute, but they have these different colors here for the green tea, the black tea, and the milk tea. All the cups are kind of like different colors, or the liquids, or the teas. And I kind of wish that it was just a little bit bigger and a little bit easier to read. Also, the negative token tolerance is quite small, and that's really hard to read. And like placing these, you can't place it on top of the negative things, but then you can't read it, so you have to place it somewhere else, and that can get kind of annoying. In addition to that, like when you have someone who wants two cups, and then you put one token here, it blocks it off, and it, it's, it's, it's not ideal, and I think they could have had a better solution. Now, thankfully, in the second edition of the game, like all of these cup tokens are replaced with nice plasticky uh, actual cups that you can place on there, so they'll be taking up less card space. So I'm really happy about that. Overall, though, I think that the game could have been a lot better if they just had a better UI and a better redesign. But I mean, at the same time, I kind of like the art, so it's a little bit of give and take there. Now, the rule book is 18 pages long, and it seems like they could have done this this type of game, like in a uh, with fewer pages, but it's bright, it's colorful, has a lot of pictures, has little examples, and those are pretty easy to read and very easy to understand. I just wish that they took more of this and put it on the board and on the components uh, to remind the players. Now, in the original game, they did kind of give this double-sided uh, player aid, and I kind of wish that they just took this and put this onto your Dupree board, because there's definitely room uh, on there to do that, especially like at the cost of how to make tea. I, th I think they could have squeezed that on somewhere to the board just to make it a little easier to read. I like to talk about games from Asia because I love exploring cultures 
through their games. Now, we already do this with food, right? We can learn a little bit about a culture from their food, but I also like to explore cultures from the games because different games tell, from different cultures tell different stories. And I love that this game tells a very unique story. Like it tells a very niche part of Indian culture and it celebrates it in a fantastic way. And you really get the feeling like, okay, I'm getting ingredients and I'm actually selling it in this market. I'm not competing with other vendors. And I really, that comes through quite well and it makes the game and learning the game a lot more easy and a lot more intuitive so it isn't confusing about what you're doing and with with games that have an india theme like it, it's so easy for people to be like oh it's a game from india look there's an elephant oh look here's ganesh you like shiva well here's shiva and it didn't do that at all it just picked a nice little niche part of the culture and celebrated it in a beautiful remarkable way i love that and i want to see more games like this Gameplay, the meat of the review. Now, this is a little tricky here because the game is a little fiddly because the market action is really fast. I just take three cards, it's done, and it's super easy to teach. I like teaching that part. Teaching the serving part has a lot of different layers to it and it can be kind of complicated and I have to review that uh, every time I teach. Also, when interesting thing happens is that most people will go uh, to the end because when you play a multiple player game it's hard for the Mela board to stay consistent so these customers are going to change and chances are they're going to get the new customers out and you're going to be looking at the new customers so people tend to serve people out of order from behind and because of that uh, another player has to uh, help out with placing the uh, negative tokens uh, on the board. Otherwise, it just takes uh, too much time. And then as they're doing that, you are getting the money for everything and you're calculating everything. So that can be a little bit of a lull there in the game and a little fiddly. And I kind of wish it were a little smoother. Now, I do like that on your turn, you have two choices. I get cards or I serve tea. And it's really simple that way. So I'm going to talk now about some of the differences between the first and the second edition in the gameplay and how it affects the gameplay. I really liked, um, first, this is going to be really confusing in this review. Uh, in the original edition, like everything gave you like half points, like half a star, half a star, half a star, half a star. And I don't know, for some reason, like it's really difficult for people to think that way. And they got rid of that, thankfully, in the second edition and everything is worth a full point. Uh, in addition to that, they got rid of these tokens and they put a victory track on the main board, like similar to like Dune Imperium or like every other Euro game out there. And it makes it just a lot easier. Now, typically when you play the game, you can kind of tell, it's not too difficult to tell to look at everyone's uh, stars and see how much everyone has, but have it being on the board just makes it a lot smoother and faster. And it cuts down on components as well. So it's a good move on the publisher. Now in the first edition rule set, money was just a very odd thing because you only spent money on one thing and that was just to get uh, more pots and that seemed just rather weird because usually when you have just one resource and the resource only gets one thing it begs the question well, why does this resource even really exist yeah at the end of the game like if you had ten dollars uh, and or ten rupees you would get half a point so twenty dollars is one whole point and thankfully they got rid of that and changed it up a little bit so in this game, in the first edition, every time you got a star, you get an upgrade. But now in this new edition, every time you get $10, you can only once on your turn, like buy an upgrade. And when you buy an upgrade, you get a full star. And I think that makes it so much better because it incentivizes you to get that specific serve to get the money and get the pots. And so that way you can do more specific serves. And as you get more money, you can buy the upgrades and it makes that engine begin to boom. And I really like that. And I like how when you get that money, you're thinking, well, do I get the same pot or do I save up for an upgrade uh, later on in the future? And you're always thinking about that now with the new rule set. Now, I also am quite glad that they included the uh, advanced game is now a part of the base rules. because I really thought it was kind of weird that they kind of separated it out. They don't have this little wheel anymore. And that's great because the wheel, while it was fun, you get a little bonus when you do a specific serve. It was just another fiddly thing that I really didn't need and it didn't really add that much uh, to the game. But I really like how you have 
uh, these different little milestones here that gives you points in a different way. And it kind of opens up the gameplay in that sense. So I can go for these, I can go for the goal cards, and I can go for the customers as well. And like you can get points uh, different, different ways. And I like that this kind of opens up the game in that way. Also, the ability to pull customers uh, from the melee board to your stand kind of guarantees that you can get those combos the way you want. And I think that really, really works well. And when you have tags that focus on a certain way, then it allows you to serve more customers. And it even makes more sense that now you can get a large pot. And I'm, I, even though I'm still not sold that you really need to buy a large pan, uh, because I mean, it's just four cups, whereas a medium is 12 and 20. I, I, I still don't think it's worth it. I haven't seen anyone buying a large pan winning the game, but I've only played this uh, game like a handful of times. I've played it all the pair accounts, and I think it plays fine with two, three, and four. But I'm just not, I'm, I'm not sold on a large pan. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this uh, Chai Garam card. If you do three single, uh, three specific serves, serve the whole row or the column, then you get this card, and that allows you to get a another one of these cards, and it allows you to play this and have a second action. Now, in the second edition of the game, this Chai Garam card has been split into two, so you have the uncle and the aunt. The uncle allows you to do the same thing, allows you to have a second turn immediately after yours, but the ant allows you to kind of clear all the negative tokens uh, from the melee board, which I think is an odd choice because it's every, nothing else in this game is altruistic like that. Like you are clearing that also, obviously you can make more money when you sell tea, but then you're also helping other people. Whereas this is the uncle just allows you to take a second turn, which is very, very powerful because you can just get cards and then serve on the same turn. And if you're lucky and you can ser specific serve all three, then you can get another Chai Garam card. That leads me to one of the things that I'm not a big fan of is that there is a one dominant strategy that if you are really good and you can time it well, then you can go to the market, use your Chai Garam card, and do a specific serve on a row and column and get all three and get another one. And then in your next turn, you do the exact same thing. If you're able to do that consistently, you will win the game uh, more than anyone else. Now that is not terribly easy to do, and it takes time to set that up and to get to that route, but that is definitely a dominant strategy that I haven't seen anyone be able to beat. Another thing that I like about the second edition is that these negative tokens, I, st I, I didn't really understand them. I didn't get them like in the first edition because at the end of the game, all they do is detract from your money and then Okay, I get ten dollars equals to half a point in the in the original edition, and then this just takes a dollar point off a dollar, and so that really didn't make that much sense to me. And they got rid of that in the second edition. In the second edition, it's just uh, if you get six negative coins, then you lose a whole point, and that that just makes a lot more sense. Now I can understand that with the first edition, maybe they want to be a little bit friendly. It's like, oh no, you're getting these tokens, so you better be careful. But the money was just like pointless to go after and I don't think it was a really winning strategy but it's really important now in the second edition because that's the only way you get your upgrades. So I was really happy that they made that uh, change in the gameplay because I really think it makes a huge difference. The first edition of this game I would probably rank it a 7. Like I wouldn't suggest it but I would play it if someone wanted to play it. But now with the second edition rules it is a lot better, a lot smoother, a lot more engaging and just a lot more fun. And I would shoot this up all the way to a nine because I like it that much. I love the art, it's bright and colorful. Yeah, there's a problem with the UI and I'm not the biggest fan of the Chai Garam card and you could get stuck if you don't have water, but I really like the gameplay because it really feels like you're making tea and you're serving tea and it just makes the game, it's a very approachable theme that a lot of different people can play. My recommendation is that if you want to get this game, do not spend your time hunting for the first edition. Just go to GameFound, get the second edition because they remapped the card so everything is not as stuck. And they redid the art on the card so it's a little bit clearer, a lot more brightful and colorful. They got rid of these tokens and have uh, little cups. So it's really nice. They have a bigger board, a nicer board because this board is not that great. Now they got rid of half points, it's all full points now. And it's just a better, cleaner production. And hopefully with uh, better card quality as well. I think Dice Lord Labs has done an excellent job with this game. This is a game that I will definitely keep in my collection for quite some time. It's really tempting to pick up a second edition of this game because I really, really like it and I really like what they're see on GameFound. Overall, I'm really impressed uh, by this game. I love that there are games coming out of India now that I can play and check out. I have two. I definitely want more. And I'm really, really excited to explore uh, this publisher and to see what other games that they have in their catalog. So I give this game uh, two thumbs up. 
Definitely recommend it if you are interested in this part of the culture, then this should be go straight to the game found. I'll put a link below and go ahead and back the game because this, this is a real winner here. Woo. Once again, my name's Jay. I play board games from Asia and share what I find with all of you. I'm gonna put some links up here to some other videos that I think you'll enjoy. See you there.